Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the newly released Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series MPM9 Autobot Jazz. As always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging and then we'll take an extremely detailed look at the figure himself. Starting off with packaging, on the front of the packaging we have a really awesome image of Jazz in his robot mode as well as his vehicle mode. We have the Pontiac Solstice emblem at the top, Masterpiece Movie Series and that this is MPM9 Jazz, the top of the box Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series, the side of the box Jazz in vehicle mode with the Sandwich Wiki figurine, the other side of the box Jazz in robot mode as well as vehicle mode and on the back of the packaging we have a really cool image of Jazz doing some kind of somersault, Sandwich Wiki, the vehicle form, Jazz being split into two pieces by Megatron, the sliding visor as well as the articulated hands. Jazz comes packaged in his vehicle mode so that is where we'll start off. In vehicle mode, Jazz is a very faithful representation of the Pontiac Solstice hardtop that we saw him obtain in the live action Transformers 2007 movie. This figure includes three accessories so let's break them down. The first accessory that we get is a very small sandwich wiki figurine. This figure has got no articulation whatsoever and seems to be carrying the AllSpark. This was definitely something that we saw in the 2007 live action Transformers movie and it's great to see Hasbro and Takara included with this release. The details in the face sculpt are nowhere near as accurate as that of the Human Alliance version, however I believe this is probably due to royalty and licensing agreements. As you can see the sculpt work is really really nice on Sam's clothing and I cannot believe the amount of detail as well as paintwork that has gone into the all spark. It really does look very very impressive. The second accessory that this figure comes with is in fact Jazz's spinal cord that we see when Megatron rips him into two halves in the movie. This obviously plays a more vital role in the robot mode however the details and the paintwork on this are absolutely incredible it's a very detailed looking piece and I believe that it has been painted spectacularly as you can see it definitely does look very realistic and very lifelike and I think that Hasbro and Takara have done a fantastic job on what essentially didn't actually have to be included and the third and final accessory that Jazz comes with is his shield that transforms into his cannon like we saw in the 2007 Transformers movie this once again has also also been painted incredibly well. The silver paint apps on the shield section are incredible and all of the different barrels and turrets on the main section of the fuselage have been painted in a fantastic metallic gold paint. As you can see it is held within this big black section which will actually be used in order to clip Jazz's hand into in robot mode and this too has been detailed really nicely however has not been painted whatsoever. And taking a look at Jazz in his Pontiac Solstice alt mode, this is an incredible representation of what we saw in that 2007 live action Transformers movie. As you can see, Hasbro and Takara have recaptured all of the detailing that we saw within the movie and the transformation of this figure is so clever that it is extremely clever and compact. As you can see there is no room on the undercarriage whatsoever for any spare pieces. This figure is a really very tightly compact and very well secured figure. It really does look incredible. The figure has been painted entirely in a premium silver paint with the windows done in a clear transparent plastic. A really great design move by Hasbro and Takara and as you can see the front Front headlights have also been done in that transparent plastic. We've got the Pontiac Solstice emblem painted in red and with all the grill sections towards the front picked out in a super nice black paint apps. We can see detailing such as the side view mirrors as well as the spoiler that will actually end up in the proper configuration on Jazz's back in robot mode. We've also got some vents which have been picked out in a super nice black paint job and we have some detailing such as the handles and the gas cap. Turning the figure around to the rear section, the rear headlights are actually done in a transparent red plastic which gives that extra sense of realism with the back two tail lights picked out in a red paint. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get this section to grab in too securely, however that's probably just a problem on my copy. As you can see there is a transparent piece of plastic towards the back in order to replicate the back window and that too really has a great effect in vehicle mode and I love the silver trim around the wheels which have also 
been detailed incredibly well. For an MPM figure as well, considering Hasbro's track record, this figure also rolls incredibly smoothly, which is fantastic to see as Jazz was definitely a very small, very fast and agile vehicle in the movie. For a MPM size comparison, here is Jazz compared next to the 2007 MPM Optimus Prime, as well as the newly released MPM Volkswagen Bumblebee from the Bumblebee solo movie. As you can see, I think he scales great alongside Optimus Prime, and if you want a sense of scale, he is more or less exactly the same size as the Volkswagen Bumblebee. The Volkswagen Bumblebee may just be a tiny bit larger due to the rear bumper, but nevertheless, I think that the scaling here works perfectly, and he really does look fantastic, along with some other movie masterpiece vehicles. Now, turning to Jazz's transformation, it's definitely not the easiest movie masterpiece figure to date, and it's actually one of the most involved and most interesting transformations that we've ever got from Takara Tomy and Hasbro. To begin with, we're going to want to loosen up this entire panel section here on both sides. So what I recommend doing is just getting your finger now here and lifting this section up ever so slightly just so that you can begin to kind of pry all of this out of place. So just open that, pull this all down and as you can see just pull this outwards just like so and repeat the exact same process on the opposite side. So just lift that up ever so slightly, untap the door and bring this whole section down and outwards just like that. What we can then proceed to do is return to the back section of the vehicle mode and stick our finger now into this section and really and truly now it's just a matter of fact of loosening all of these back tabs up so just untab that just like so which will then allow us to proceed to rotate this entire back section over so just take this and kind of untab it just like that and then bring it over and then rot rotate the spoiler. The spoiler was originally like this. Rotate the spoiler backwards and bring this whole piece over and just collapse it along the side just like so. What we can then do is take this and just unseparate these so that we now have the two legs of Jazz clearly defined. And then what we'll proceed to do is return to the front of the vehicle mode now and actually take this whole windscreen section and also lift this up as well. So just take this and lift this whole section upwards just like that. And now in here, there is actually a hinge. What you're going to want to do is bend this backwards. It is on a double hinge and then fold it forward just like so, which will then create the main section of Jazz is back. Returning now to the back of the figure, what we can proceed to do is take this section here and just bring it around just like so. And then now take these and they are on hinge joints. So we could just bring that up on both sides and then proceed to unfurl all of this just take this whole section and just bring it all down so that it does kind of look as if though Jazz's legs have completely exploded. Now what we'll do is turn around to what will be the front section and as you can see here this is really where you have to pay attention. There is a small slot on the underside of Jazz's shin that will actually plug into this tab here. Now what I recommend doing is taking this and just kind of moving it out of the way so that you have clearance. This is on a double hinge joint, so just angle it in a way until you can snap it into place, just like so. Repeat the same process on the opposite side now. So just move this wheel out of the way and then bring this section upwards until we can get it to tab into place. So just snap that one in also. With both of the shins now securely in place, we can rotate now to the back of the figure and we're going to want to bring these wheels down all the way just like so. Just bring them down and angle them so that they are now facing downwards. Now what we can do is take this section here. Now what you'll want to do here is as you can see this circular hole will actually have this tiny circular tab inserted into it. So you're going to want to collapse these double hinges and just snap that clearly into place on both of Jazz's sides. So repeat the same process, collapse that double hinge and snap that into place. What we can then do is proceed to rotate this section all the way now to the back so that the tail light is now facing to the backward section. Repeat the same process on this side. So take this and just bring that backwards just like that. 
Now what you're going to do is actually take these sections here and tab them into the insides of the shins. Now underneath here, as you can see, there is a slot in there that this tab will actually go into. You're going to want to straighten out the double hinge joint and just clip that into place just like so until it has securely snapped into its new positioning. Repeat the same process on the opposite side collapse and tab into place until it is securely locked in. Now what we can proceed to do is rotate to the front and fold out the toes just like so. And then what you'll want to do is this slot here will plug into this tab here. So you're going to want to bring this all the way back and align it appropriately until it clips into place just like so. And then repeat the same process on the opposite side rotate that and snap that into place just like so. With that now done, we can turn our attention to these sections and you're just going to want to spray them out just like so, so that they are no longer grouped together and then spray the opposite side out just like that. Turn our attention now to the back section and you're essentially just going to want to collapse this in upon itself, just closing the kind of gap section up. These don't actually tab into anywhere, they will just rest along the back sections of Jazz's wheels and that does kind of complete the entire base section of the legs of Jazz. Now what you'll want to do is angle the arms up and lift these pieces outwards. This kind of creates the hip armor for Jazz and then just bring these and collapse those up in order to give him more of a squat look. And there is the entire lower region of Jazz now completely transformed. Now this is where things get slightly more difficult as the instructions are quite vague on whereabouts all of the different hinges will go. So I'm actually going to try my best in demonstrating what the instructions failed to mention. So now what you'll want to do is turn your attention to this whole section here. What you're going to want to do is remove the front bonnet section from this piece here, just pull it away as far as you possibly can and now bring the arms downwards just like so. Now what you'll want to do is this whole section here is actually on a swivel joint. You're going to want to rotate this all the way around so that this piece here is now facing here. It's quite difficult to do due to the clearance of the arms. So I do really recommend that you are fairly cautious when doing this step, but just try and rotate this all the way around just like so, so that the arms are now facing upwards instead of downwards as you will have rotated this whole piece 180 degrees. Now what you'll want to do is collapse the bonnet section inwards. Now there is a clip underneath here that will plug into those sections there. So just kind of snap that into place. And now there is a second rotation joint that you'll want to rotate 180 as well. And now we can really begin working on the whole upper torso section of Jazz. There is a clip here that would clip in for vehicle mode. What you're going to want to do is essentially just untab that just like so. And this is very similar to the Studio Series version in the sense that underneath here, there is a slot that these clips will actually plug into. So you're just going to want to kind of angle this and maneuver this in a way so that you can get those tabs plugged into place. Let's just snap that in on one side and then the opposite side should also be fairly easy to go. And that is the torso now locked in to the main part of Jazz's body. What we can now do is take this section, which is on a double hinge joint, and just untab that and rotate it down and bring it down. It just kind of makes the chest look more transformed and more movie accurate. Bring the arms down now and angle these pieces in whatever way you so choose. I tend to angle them upwards as that is more of a movie accurate look. Now what you're going to want to do is turn your attention to the back section. Now this actually tabs into various different places. So what you're going to want to do here is this slot here will plug into this tab here and then this slot here will actually have this tab plug into it. So just collapse this just like so and then snap this piece into place until it clicks in and then the back will be solidified. And now what you're going to want to do is take the spoiler section, which will actually have two hook sections that will tab into there and there. Just take this and snap that into place just like so. Come to the back now and flare these pieces upwards. And there you have the entire back transformed as well as the main torso section. Now what we'll do is turn our attention to the back once again collapse these pieces here and then just fold these upwards. I'm not entirely sure what these are supposed to do or whether or not they're movie accurate or not. 
To me, I'd literally just think that they're extra pieces that Takara crammed in in order for the design to look more complex. You're then going to want to turn the figure to the front now and then taking the side panels, what you're going to want to do here is untab this one and lift it upwards just like so. And then once that is tabbed in, we can then take this whole section here and just take this and tab this into the wheel. So just snap that into place and repeat the same process on the opposite side now to so take this kind of untabbing it from all of the hand section and collapse that into place and then take this whole section now and it will kind of grasp around the wheel using this clip so just clip that into place and then now we can begin working on the forearms what you're going to want to do is fold the hands out and then fold them to the sides just like so come to the headlights and bring them all the way down. Repeat the same process on the opposite side now. Straighten this joint out. So just take this, straighten it out if it hasn't done so already. And now rotate this so that the unpainted section is now facing you, as this will just allow for clearance as we're going to take this, fold it over, and just leave it like that. Repeat the same process on the opposite side now. Just kind of leave it resting there. And now what you'll want to do is, as you can see, there is a slot there that this transparent clear piece of plastic will actually slide into. Just pushing that back some more so that we can get the alignment accurately done. Push that all the way back and this will tab into place just like so. And then this should, if you've aligned it properly, essentially just slide into place just like that. Repeat the same process on the opposite side now. So take this, lift this up, and on the inside, this kind of section here will hook into there. So just hook that in and rotate this piece in, and it should snap into place. And there you essentially have the arms of Jazz fully completed. And now we can take these collarbone sections and just rotate them on ball joints. I should mention that these are quite stiff out of packaging, so I wouldn't recommend extreme force as you could perhaps break them as the plastic on movie masterpiece figures tends to be more delicate than mass release products. So I do definitely recommend that you take your time with these pieces. Then what you're going to want to do is take this section here, pull this out, which will expose the head and just take the head and fold it out just like so, and then collapse this section down. And there we have the Transformers movie masterpiece MPM9 Jazz fully transformed and in his robot mode. So definitely a very involved and complex transformation. However, I hope that you can see the outcome is definitely very positive. This is by far the most accurate representation that we have ever got for movie jazz produced by Hasbro and Takara Tomy. This figure really does look as if though it has leaped off of the screen and Hasbro and Takara have done a fantastic job. And this is actually one of the few movie masterpiece figures that I actually think Takara and Hasbro have put a lot of attention and detail into as so far this figure has no quality control issues whatsoever which really seem to have played to the MPM line. Now starting off with detail, taking a look at Jazz's head sculpt, it is a fantastic sculpt. It really really does look incredible and there is just so much paint on it as well. The different gold accents as well as the silver paint really does help to make some of the attributes pop. I love the very involved and very well sculpted crest section of Jazz. You can kind of make out his horns which to me looks as if though it's spiked hair and we've got a really cool Autobot insignia printed on the top. Now, as you can see, I clearly have Jazz's visor deployed. However, Hasbro and Takara have gone to the extra length in an allowing you to have the different look of Jazz by retracting his visor like we saw when Jazz was first introduced to us during the Autobot arrival. This is extremely easily to do. All you essentially need to do is lift this section upwards just like so, be careful you don't untab the whole neck section and then fold the visor in just like that and collapse it down 
and now we can reveal the true face of Autobot Jazz. As you can see, this too has been detailed really nicely and we do have some blue light piping. However, it is useless due to the fact that there is no light piping section at the back of his head. This is a really great inclusion and definitely does give you a very different look for Jazz, although the effect is fairly subtle. Pulling the visor back out can be quite tedious due to its minute size. However, this is something that I do not believe Hasbro and Takara could have accomplished. Turning now to some of the details on the next section, as you can see, all of this piece here has been painted incredibly well the detail really is fantastic and it really does seem to me as if though Hasbro and Takara are making up for lost time with some of the most lackluster releases such as the Optimus Prime and the QC issues that plagued MPM Ironhide. This figure really is up there with some of the generation masterpieces and I really like how complex in design but how very compact the shoulder armour is for him. It's very very movie accurate and turning now to the forearms there is also some nice detailing there and I really like how the whole look comes together. Some cool gold detailing there and some silver paint. Now a set of paint apps and detailing that I was completely unexpected to see was the detailing on Jazz's back. Hasbro and Takara really have gone to the extra length ensuring that this figure is the most definitive and most best represented version of Jazz from the movie verse as they've actually detailed the entire back section and it engineered the figure so that the spoiler now faces the upright position much like we saw in the movie. This is really really awesome to see and was something that the Human Alliance and Studio Series versions both failed to do. Turning now back to the core detailing of the figure, as you can see we've got some super nice detailing in the mid torso section of a license plate. There is also once again some nice gold hydraulic detailing as well as some silver paint apps and this whole hip armour section is just incredibly detailed and incredibly sculpted. It really does look magnificent. Lifting these hip pieces up as you can see these sections here have been picked out in a reddish burgundy type of paint and the entire section of the leg has also been done in a really nice silver paint app. Turning now to the shin section of the figure, this too has been detailed incredibly well and I really, really love the paint apps on this figure. So overall for detail and paint work, Hasbro and Takara have definitely knocked it out of the park when producing Jazz. Now despite the figure having a fairly complex transformation and tremendous movie accurate detailing, this figure is also incredibly articulated. Starting off with the head as usual, the head is on a hinge joint so it can look up and down and can also look left and right and if you wish to use the transformation joint you can also get him looking further up however this kind of disengages the whole neck assembly making the sculpt not look complete. These shoulder blade sections as I stated are on ball joints however they are incredibly stiff and the arms are on various hinge joints. Now this is actually where I have one of my issues with this figure although it is fairly minute I wish this hinge was perhaps sitting more in the center as due to its closeness proximity to these front sections it it does tend to bump and hinder articulation quite significantly. Although these sections are articulated and it can be worked around, it can be quite frustrating just when you want to pose the figure. And I personally do think that it does look slightly odd that they're slightly off-centered. However, you can use the hinge joints and kind of hinge them back in order to create a look that looks more natural. But the articulation joint remains the same. The arms can also hinge out to the sides just like so as well as hinge on a butterfly joint. They can rotate forwards and backwards. Turning now to this section here, there is also a rotation joint just above the elbow and the elbow can also bend to a 90 degrees. Turning now to the fingers, these are actually articulated at two points, the base of the finger and the tip of the finger. This allows you to spray Jazz's hands out much like we saw in the movie. So you can in fact get all, all four fingers in this kind of gripping pose, which is mainly where we see him magnetize the weapons of Sector 7 in order to disarm them. There is also a hinge joint allowing you to move the hand up and down. However, this is mainly due to transformation. Turning now to torso articulation and due to the awesome gimmick, which I'll get into straight after this segment, there is a ratcheted waist joint, which is fantastic to see on an MPM figure as it allows the range of posability to go even further. Moving the hip armor out of the way, which is on a hinge joint, we can kick the legs forward forwards that far as well as back that far and they are not hindered whatsoever by the back kibble. There is also a joint which allows you to fully make Jazz do the splits. There is a rotation at the thigh as well as a 90 degree bend at the knee due to double hinge joints which is fantastic to see. 
Turning now to the foot articulation, this is where it is slightly weak as there is a very minute ankle rocker joint which has been placed directly on the die cast section. This really doesn't offer a great range of motion whatsoever, however it is a nice inclusion nonetheless. Now turning to how to actually implement Jazz's weapon onto him, it's extremely straightforward. All you essentially want to do is grasp the fingers together just like so and there is a groove section on here as you can see for slots of the fingers which literally just slides over the top and that is essentially how you plug the weapon onto Jazz's hand. Now I have seen other people who have picked this up saying that they wish that the hands were slightly more straight centred as the cannon is off at an angle however Jazz was always posing the cannon in a variety of different ways in the movie and I never really saw him pose it straightwards so this this honestly isn't an issue for me whatsoever and considering I'm going to have the figure posed with the cannon it really really doesn't detract anything from me at all and I think that the overall look looks really well done it definitely does look as if though it has morphed and transformed out of Jazz's hand which was definitely the look that we saw in the film. Now turning to a gimmick that I never ever believed that Hasbro and Takara would ever execute, you can actually recreate Jazz's death scene from the 2007 Transformers movie where Megatron is extremely greedy and instead of wants one piece, he wants two pieces. In order to do this, this has been engineered and designed incredibly well and I'm so surprised that it doesn't infect any part of the transformation whatsoever and that the sculpt looks really consistent. Turning around to the back section of Jazz, there is this small section that sticks out ever so slightly from the rest of the sculpt which is actually spring loaded which can be pushed. Upon pushing it in you will actually release a mechanism inside which with enough force applied will actually allow you to split Jazz into two pieces. Just to show you how that looks from within, as you can see there is this section here which actually kind of cups the groove and when you push this it does free that joint up allowing you to pull Jazz's main torso from his body. This is a fantastic piece of engineering and honestly was the icing on the cake for this figure potentially being my favourite movie masterpiece figure to date. This figure really, really has impressed me significantly and if you remember previously when I took a look at the accessories, he he does in fact come with an additional spine piece in order for extra authenticity and realism. In order to plug this in it literally slides over the top of this section however you're going to want to ensure that these two black tabs are facing forwards so that they can slide smoothly into this slot here. What you're going to want to do is just plug that over the top just like so. And here we have Jazz completely destroyed and looking as if though Megatron has just ripped him into two pieces. This really to me looks awesome and with the additional spine piece it really does give you that look that Jazz has been destroyed and damaged in battle. Now of course showing Jazz's ability to split into two elements wouldn't be complete if I didn't show you how it looked on the movie masterpiece Megatron. Now I have got to say straight away that it is quite fiddly to actually get the two halves of Jazz into Megatron's hands due to the extreme looseness of the joints of his fingers and the heavy weight of this figure as the bottom half of Jazz contains the main majority of the die cast pieces. What I tend to do is of course put the main top section of Jazz in here like so and then try and get the fingers to actually wrap around the cord and then lift this section up and just plague that underneath. Your main issue will be the swivel joint of Megatron's elbow section so with that set into place we can now take the legs, which I also find to be quite difficult to actually get Megatron to hold. So just balancing that just like so. There we have Megatron ripping Jazz into two pieces, which is honestly such an amazing representation of what we see in the film and was something that I never ever thought we would see in plastic or die cast form. And for a Transformers movie masterpiece size comparison, here we have the brand new MPM9 Jazz with the rest of the core 2007 Autobot team and don't they all look absolutely fantastic. It would have only had been a dream three or four years ago that I had ever thought that we'd get the original 2007 Autobots in a masterpiece representation. This honestly to me looks incredible and if you're a fan of the Michael Bay Transformers films then you owe it to yourself to pick up the entire set 
of these MPM figures. Despite their flaws, there is no denying that the sculpts are absolutely incredible and that all of these are the most definitive and most accurate representations we've ever got for each of their characters. My only hope now is that MPM 11 or MPM 12 gets announced and we can finally complete our Autobot team in giving us a movie masterpiece ratchet. For a Transformers movie jazz comparison, here we have the MPM jazz compared next to the Human Alliance jazz, which was until now my favorite and best representation of Jazz and also the Studio Series version. As you can see, he is the middle one out in terms of height and is shorter than the Human Alliance. However, it towers over the Studio Series version and it is clear to see that the detailing on this figure is absolutely remarkable. He really does stand out from the rest of the figures and there is no doubt in my mind that this figure has now replaced this Jazz as the best representation of him from the 2007 live action movie. So that is my review for the Transformers movie masterpiece MPM9 Autobot Jazz. If you haven't gathered already, I am extremely, almost beyond impressed with this release by Takara Tomy and Hasbro. It really honestly does feel as if though they are making up for lost time with their previous lackluster MPM releases as this is one of the figures that actually has no quality control issues whatsoever and really does live up to the name of a movie masterpiece. This figure is by no doubt the best representation we have ever got for Jazz in the live action Transformers movies. I think his Pontiac Solstice alt form looks incredible and the transformation is very very involved much like you would expect from a Takara Tomy masterpiece transformation and the end result in robot mode also looks incredible. The gimmick where you can actually split Jazz into two pieces to me is astonishing as it does not compromise the robot mode or the vehicle mode whatsoever and it honestly you wouldn't even realize it was there unless it was pointed out to you. That's how well hidden it is. The paint apps on this figure are also incredible. He's been decked out in a really nice silver premium paint deco and whilst he doesn't have as many die cast pieces as some of the other MPM figures I definitely think that that isn't a drawback whatsoever as this figure honestly looks great and definitely feels very very premium. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did please let me know down in the comment section below and be sure to let me know what you think of this particular release by Hasbro and Takara Tomy and whether or not you'll be adding this MPM9 jazz to your collection. Thanks for watching.